So I was wondering, in a, as a general question, um, with the two new ones that you've shown, I always think that when you're, when you're showing something, you're probably, to a certain extent, having to reflect on them, probably because of the Q&As as well. But where you feel you are right now in your, your filmmaking? Well, when, when I uh, start showing some work, some new work, um, uh, there's usually a curtain that comes down and uh, I stop functioning as a filmmaker for uh, a while. Uh, it could be a week, it could be a month, it could be longer, it really depends. Uh, at that point it's a question of uh, pulling back, looking at the work that you've done and uh, also trying to, making an attempt to articulate uh, what you think was happening in the works and where the works are coming from. When I'm working, it's a, uh, a dialogue with myself and the things that I see on screen that are happening or on a monitor, depending whether I'm working with film or uh, digital media. Is that something that when you have to deliver, say, like a Q&A, there tends to be questions that want to maybe demystify the process? Yeah, uh, it's, it's difficult because, I, uh, as I said last night, I do work intuitively uh, and I make my decisions based upon uh, a lifetime of uh, experience, responses, uh, not only to uh, materials I'm working with and what I see are the potentials, but also my personal life. Yeah, so, uh, and that not just involves uh, working with a moving image, but um, you know, some things that may be very, very personal. You know, and uh, I have to distance them. Uh, in terms of my uh, material that relates to what might have prompted a work, for example, um, I try to keep that uh, really uh, under the rug, so to speak. Uh, because that's not something somebody else can pick up. And uh, uh, that would be a problem if I start putting it in front of people. I think uh, they should respond to what's actually there, you know, have their own experience rather than trying to uh, see it through my eyes. Or, you know. So you have to draw a line maybe as far even as, as you say with the personal element and that even comes up I guess with the, the Scott McDonald uh, interview, I know that was like a point which is like with personal cinema such as this, how much do you explain about yeah. it? Well, there is also a difference between um, releasing a work, showing it uh, the first few times and being able to articulate what you feel, what you can convey about it to other people. Uh, there are different languages that we use, for one thing. So, uh, you know, when, when I'm looking at a work while I'm working on it, uh, I'm living with it, and I do not use coherent uh, verbal language. I might use a word or two here and there, uh, but then I fill in in between uh, through another language, you know, which isn't verbal. So then when I'm in front of uh, a group of individuals who are asking me questions, you know, I, I find myself in a situation of trying to put those uh, experiences into language, communicable language, another language, you know, another communicable language. Uh, and that sometimes takes me a while before I can manage to do that. And I think that may be true for other people too. You know, so. Uh, 
With the, uh, the new ones, uh, I wanted to ask you about the um, recurrence of trains in your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, funny, you know, that's almost as uh, something, um, well, let, let, let me offer you uh, a different experience, you know. Uh, earlier this year, I think in April, or was it, I, I believe it was in April, March, uh, I showed some, uh, two programs in Los Angeles uh, at RATCAT, and uh, one was a film program and a digital program. And the film program, for example, was just the early work in chronological order from uh, Morning, the first 60 millimeter film I released through Serene Velocity. Uh, and I hadn't seen them in that order in a long time, decades, to be quite frank with you about it. And uh, it was, I was impressed. I said, gee, did I really do that after this? That was very intelligent. You know, it's almost like there was a plan and there wasn't. One work uh, was realized, I had no idea what on earth I was going to do next. And then at some point, the next work came into being for whatever reason, you know. So, uh, so there are, uh, it, it's very hard to, um, uh, I, I, I also like to leave the works open to some degree, uh, rather than lock them in into some particular way of seeing. I think each of us, you, me, and anybody else who's looking at the work, is coming from somewhere else, depending on your own needs, your own education, uh, your own ways of seeing things, you know, and um, also cultures, you know, maybe, you know, if the works survive for another 10, 15, 20 years or more, <coughs> I assume they will be seen quite differently uh, as uh, people might see it today, you know, so um, who knows what it what they will look like to an audience in 50 years from now. You know? So I'd be interested in knowing, but I'm not going to be around that long. <laughs> so uh, uh, anyway, uh, did I uh, get off track? I was asking about trains. Oh, oh <laughs> trains, yeah. Well, trains and cars. Yeah. And I've tried n not to go back to them. Every, uh, I think after I made a uh, film in 1969, um, transparency, I said, okay, don't touch cars anymore. And there you go, there's uh, Auto Collider, you know, so uh, a, a work I had not intended. Uh, you know, at the, before uh, approaching that material, um, I didn't want to touch uh, cars. I had made a number of other works. You've seen one, Shift, you know, uh, again, I said after that one, okay, no more cars, please. But there, uh, well, there are two things. One is they're convenient sometimes as uh, uh, indirect vehicles r relative to the medium that I'm working with uh, or, w well, was working with film, you know, which is a product of the machine age. And so is the car. Uh, so they came into being more or less around the same time, turn of the century, late 19th century, early 20th century. So uh, they're uh, brothers of sorts uh, and part of a larger uh, um, umbrella called the machine and the Industrial Revolution. You know? So they're, they're part of that world. So there's a reason. And, and uh, the trains are likewise, you know. They're uh, this great 19th century symbol of uh, the machine age, you know. It's how it all started, in a way. Not necessarily that there weren't any uh, machines and industrial developments before that. You know, definitely there were factories already and there were other methods besides uh, the, or, um, the trains, but uh, the train had a, a big uh, saying in, in terms of uh, the Industrial Revolution and what it ended up doing. But I'm not touching on that. 
in um, what is it departure yeah mm -hmm. you know that that's uh, distant in a way you know I'm not dealing with the industrial revolution <laughs> right there you know, so it would be too large a, a topic for me I like uh, to approach works also um, on a humane, everyday level, mundane level, we might say. Um, I don't necessarily like to touch um, topics that are on a pedestal, you know. It's uh, too much of a generality that you're dealing with. Um, I, I make works that emanate from individual, from an individual, and it's addressed to other individuals in the world. Not to an audience, you know, but to individuals in the world. Um, that's very important to me. So if someone is touched by the work in some way, uh, or, it, you know, reaches them in some ways, that's wonderful. Um, you know, I, I don't know how to address an audience, you know, I don't, you know, it's, Everyone, everyone, everyone is uh, somewhat different, you know. So.